In the workshop, how to permanently plug a hole that is in the wrong place, plus a look at an interesting and useful accessory. This clip is taken from my Simplex Prairie Tank series, and it shows a problem. I drilled the hole for the snifting valve in the smoke box, but unfortunately, as this engine has dummy steam pipe covers at each side, one is in the way. There's only one thing for it, I need to remove the smoke box and permanently get rid of this hole. Having a look at some alternative methods, none of them come anywhere near the method I'm going to use to permanently get rid of this hole. In service, the smoke box gets hot. That rules out JB Weld, car body filler and soft solder. This clip shows me removing the petticoat pipe. Over now to the lathe, and I'm using a 3 8 of an inch diameter drill bit to initially set the micrometer, and this drill is exactly 3 8 of an inch in diameter. This is a very simple job, so I'm not going to labour it. I'm making a plug that fits in the hole in the side of the smoke box. A simple bit of plain turning followed by parting off the piece that I need, then putting the piece that I parted off back into the chuck to clean it up. This plug needs to be a tight fit in the hole, but the thickness of it needs to be less than the wall of the smoke box. As you can clearly see, it is a tight fit in the hole. And looking at it from the other side, you can clearly see that it does not extend into the smoke box. The reason for this will become obvious very shortly. I'm in the outer part of the workshop on the brazing hearth. I've applied some flux to the plug. And now it's time to silver solder the plug in place. I'm using a larger blowtorch head because this is quite a large item. Not the plug, I mean the entire smoke box. And it takes quite a while to heat it up. So this clip is heavily edited. As the work gets somewhere near the temperature, I've applied a lump of silver solder to it which sits as a blob in the middle. And eventually, when the temperature is right, the blob of silver solder melts and forms a pool in the recess created by the plug. Note to self, even in winter, it's a good idea to open the outside door when I'm in the outer part of the workshop silver soldering large items. The temperature is quite excessive, far too hot for me. Eventually the time comes when I can turn off the blowtorch, and this is what it looks like on the inside. I don't want to quench this part because it may disturb the rivets and it's not a good idea, so I need to leave it to cool. And while that's happening, I'd like to show you this. A kind viewer by the name of Dan sends me things from time to time. This arrived in the post, and I didn't initially know who it was from. But then I received a message from Dan asking if anything had arrived in the post recently. The first thing I had to do was buy some of these special small batteries. Here they are. I had to buy a pack of them. It looks very much like a machine that you would vape with, you know, an electronic cigarette substitute. And it's a really nice thing. I fitted the batteries and then as per the instructions I tested it. It seems to work fine. The ball at the end is insulated from the rest of the body. And the rest of the body fits in your collet chuck in the milling machine. There is unfortunately a bit of a slight problem. The diameter of the body of the edge finder is 20mm. So I went back online and bought a 20mm R8 collet, and I'm waiting for that to arrive. I'm quite looking forward to using this gadget. I have a wiggler or wobbler set, and that is OK. But I'm thinking that this optical device that makes a beeping noise could be easier to use. Here I'm illustrating the fact that it doesn't fit in any of my Imperial collets. I don't use these things very much, but they are quite clever. And I think I'll make a short video in the Model Engineering for Beginners series about how these work. You can see how this works. The ball on the end is insulated from the rest of the body. I will show how it works when I get the 20mm collet. For now, it's back to plugging the hole in the smoke box. The part is still hot, it took absolutely ages to cool down, and here I'm initially attacking it with a needle file, which is the hard way to do it really. But if I didn't have one of these, which is a Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel, I would have had to persevere with the needle file. Just to illustrate how useful the Proxon motor tool was, as you can see now when I use the needle file, the plug is almost flush with the outer part of the smoke box. 
It's not quite there yet, I can still see it. When I can no longer see the plug or feel it with my fingers, then I know it's somewhere near. A bit more abrasive is still needed, this is after rubbing it with emery cloth. And here I'm using a paper sanding disc as used in the dental industry. You can see this is making quite a good job and polishing it up. The final finish is obtained by handwork. I'm working my way down the grades of sandpaper. Finally finishing off the job with 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper. I think this should be sufficient. By the time the smoke box is painted, I really don't think you'll see this plug. And now it's time for the big clean up. I'm using a cup shaped wire brush in the Proxon mini drill. And this is ideal for a couple of reasons. It's really easy to get in between the rivets and it's also scratching the top surface of the rivets. I gave the smoke box a really good going over a couple of times. For the part of the smoke box in between the rows of rivets, I used some emery cloth. I thought it would be a good idea to apply some paint to the area where I'd plugged the hole. At the same time, I then thought it would be a good idea to paint the entire smoke box with etching primer. The plan being to paint the boiler and the smoke box before fitting them into the frames. And that's it for this episode of In the Workshop. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.